So welcome to my talk, Run PowerShell with Azure Deployment Scripts. First of all, many thanks to all our sponsors. I hope you all enjoyed the community dinner yesterday. yesterday. I for sure did. And the sponsors make stuff like this possible. So if you haven't checked out their boots yet, please do at one point. Also, quick reminder, after the lunch break, there's the community demos. And there's still about eight spots left for people to present their things. It's only 10 minute blocks. So if you have something cool to show, just sign up via the QR code and show us what you have to present because we would love to see what you all been working on. With that being said, who am I? I'm Leo Visser. I'm a cloud consultant at OGD in the Netherlands. I work with infrastructure as code, CICD, automation, agile, DevOps. If you have the buzzword bingo, any word on it, I'm probably doing it. You can find me on Twitter at autosysops and I have a blog, autosysops.com. Um, some of the stuff I will be talking about today, you can also find on my blog. Some of the stuff isn't on there yet. Probably be there somewhere in the next year when I find some time to blog again. So, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about deployment scripts, what they are, when to use them. We're going to talk a little bit about authentication, some input and output, a little bit of troubleshooting. And if there's some time left, I'm going to talk about some of the use cases I've seen in the field. Or if there's no, no questions, we can also do this. So, deployment scripts. If you're working with Azure, you are probably familiar with Azure deployments, just using ARM templates, BICEP templates, or whatever, to push resources to Azure. So in code, we define which resources we want to uh, create in Azure, and this is sent to Azure. Now, sometimes we want to run a script in between to do whatever we want. And this is a deployment script. So it is something which is in my Azure deployment itself, but it is a script running. What actually Azure actually does when it's doing a deployment script is it will spin up a small container where inside the container it will run your script and afterwards it will remove the container again. And I know, I know you all love demos. So let's just start by doing a little demo. So I'm one of those weird persons who likes to look at JSON. So excuse me, I'm going to use ARM during this demo. But everything I'm showing, you can also do in BICEP. You can probably do it easier in BICEP. It's just... I work a lot with Brownfield customers. Most of the customers, I'm happy if they actually have a cloud platform already. Um, and if they have, they've probably been doing this for so many years that everything is an ARM. So I work a lot with ARM still. Trying to go to get them to Bicep, but it's a long journey. So I'm going to, by the way, is it readable for you in the back? I'm going to create a, an automation account in Azure. And we're going to do some other stuff, which I will explain later. And then here, here, we have the deployment script. So we're going to do a deployment script. It has some different stuff inside it, and it will run a script. I will explain what's exactly happening during the course of the next few minutes. But let's first start it, because everything in Azure takes time. So while it's running, I can then talk a bit more. You might notice I'm using template specs. For people who don't know template specs, it's a way to store your ARM templates in Azure, a little bit like also the marketplace. And from here, I can just press deploy. It will give me a nice um, form where I can say, well, what's the subscription, the region, and let's create a new resource group 
to deploy our stuff to. It's going to validate it. And it's going to create it. So while this is running, um, what I'm doing now is I'm starting this deployment. You see some of the stuff goes quite quickly. So it created an automation account, so managed identity. And now at the top, you see it did the deployment script. Let's open up another tab to look at this deployment script. So if I now go to deployment scripts, and I keep refreshing, hopefully it will be there. So you see, it created a resource called deployment script. This is a specific resource in Azure. And it says now it's provisioning. I can already look at it a bit. So for example, I can look at the input which it's giving. So I'm giving it some kind of parameters. I can look at the script which we're running. And eventually, I should be able to look at the output. And this is still running. So while this is running, let's go on a little bit. And then after it's done running, we will look at it a bit more. Because I set it up in a way where it won't remove itself instantly, but it takes an hour for itself to remove. So we should be able to look at it later. So why and when will want we to use deployment scripts? Because we could just make an Azure DevOps pipeline, for example, and run some PowerShell in this pipeline, and then take the output from this script and use it in our ARM templates as, for example, a parameter. Well, sometimes. Um, I want to make something, for example, for the Azure Marketplace, and I just need to have one big uh, template, and I can't make create like a whole pipeline. And there's situations where I do need to run some code. For example, the use case which Microsoft often uh, says, adding delays. Sounds stupid, but sometimes you create, for example, an identity or an app registration. And we all know that Azure seems quite fast, but if you created something and you're instantly going to request access to it, it's all asynchronous. So if you're unlucky, you go to a different server or a different endpoint and it's not there yet. And then your whole deployment fails because it can't find it and things break. So with deployment scripts, you can create a step in between to just run a script which says, wait for a minute, and then continue. Another one is calculating some values. We're going to look at this a bit later also, but sometimes you need to calculate some values inside your script. For example, dates, which will be different every time you run this deployment. And there's also some stuff like the one I'm doing now. In the script, I'm do what I'm doing now, which is running, I'm pushing a PowerShell script to an automation account. So I'm setting up an automation account, and I want to have a runbook inside this automation account. I could use like a Git integration for this, but some customers, they don't have these Git integrations, or they don't want this to be connected. So inside my template, I have a script, and I'm pushing this script towards it. So we can now look a little bit better at the code. So here we see the script content, and it's very hard to read. So just, let's just look at it in Azure. Here we see the script again, and I should be able to zoom it a bit more. Yes. And here we see that it does some get AZ context to know for sure I'm in the right subscription. And then it does an import automation runbook, and I've created like a very small script, write host, hello world, which is stored in a file. I'm running in a container, so I can actually use a file system. And I'm pushing this one to my automation account. So we should be able to see that it's done now. Yeah, it says, says succeeded. 
So now I should be able to go to my automation accounts. There should be an automation account created. And if I go to run books, there's a run book. We could look at it and it says, right host, hello world. Apparently I did some escaping wrong this time. I was still working on this to get it all right. But it pushed my code towards here. So the deployment scripts, they're both supported in ARM and, and, and BICEP, as I said before. And it has some nice advantages, like it does automatic cleanup. So I just run this script. It created this container for now. In an hour, this whole container is gone and there's no trace of it left. Which can be an issue if you want to have some traceability, but the information is still in my deployment. So I can look back at my deployment and see this script has run. Also, it has different identity options. I'm going to go into this in a moment. Um, I now gave it a script inside my ARM template, but it's also possible to say to get a script from a remote repository like GitHub. If you have a public GitHub repository, you can say just give the URL of this script in the GitHub repository and it will use this script. It will get it and run it. And one of the nicest features, AZ PowerShell is automatically included and will also automatically connect using the uh, managed identity. This one I already showed. Because if we're going to look at authentication, these deployment scripts, they have their own managed identity. Some of you might have been to the talks, I believe it was on the first day about the state of secrets. And from what I understood, managed identities were also mentioned there. And with these managed identities, we can do a lot of stuff. It has also the option to use user assigned managed identities. And this is what I'm doing in my deployment script. So now we can go back to one of the things I skipped over quite quickly. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a user assigned managed identity. So I'm creating a identity object in Azure which then can be connected to certain roles. So in this spot, I link a role to it. And we can actually look in Azure at these things. So here I have the managed identities. This is the managed identity I created. And we should be able to check its role assignments and we see that it got the automation contributor role in this specific resource group. So I can set the scoping, I can set the different roles. I can also create a custom role and link this custom role to this managed identity all in my template. And because this identity now has the automation contributor role, the deployment script we have here is allowed to actually access this automation account we created. Because by default, it wouldn't be able to access it because it is a managed identity, but it is a managed identity without any access. So in here, in the deployment script, I set the type to user assigned identity and I linked the identity we created to this deployment script. So this deployment script was running under this managed identity. Now, in my setup, it won't delete the managed identity afterwards, but there is ways which in way, uh, where you can also, for example, delete the managed identity. You could wait until the deployment script was done and then delete the managed identity again, for example. Also, maybe it's not such a problem that this managed identity is here, especially if we're going to look at some later use cases. How are we for time? It's going so fast. So, there's also input and output because we're running a script. And if we're running a script, 
you saw me already giving it some input. I gave it like a subscription name. I gave it a resource group name so I can deploy it to the right automation account. But sometimes I want the output. For example, the next ARM template I'm going to do, I want to create a schedule in my automation account. So I want to schedule the run book I just created to run every hour. Some of you might have created a schedule before. And one of the problems in Azure is if you want to create this schedule, the start date always needs to be in the future. You can't say the start date was January 1st, uh, 2000 at zero hours. It will say invalid. So if I want to create a schedule with this run book I created, and it has to run every hour, I need to find the first hour after now where it should start. Because if I say start now, it won't be running exactly on the hour. And often I want to control where it's running. So this is a nice use case for deployment scripts, if I want to have it in one big deployment. So we're going to look at the next one I'm going to run in a moment. So we're going to run another deployment script. This one doesn't have an identity set to it because I'm not going to access any resources. It's just a script running. That's all. I've, get it, I've given it a name, get first hour. And here we have the script content. And you'll see I'm using a parameter, deployment script outputs. And I've given it here text. I've picked text because this is the one which is used in the demos from Microsoft. In the help files from Microsoft, it uses text. So this is why I use this. But you can fill in whatever you want here. And I'm going to do a very simple PowerShell command. I'm going to get the date, set the minutes and seconds to zero, and add one hour to it. So that should get the date now with minutes and hour, uh, seconds to zero, and then one hour in the, in the future. So it should always be a date in the future on the whole hour. I'm also giving it a time zone. This should work, but we'll see that with Azure Automation, it's still a kind of a trick uh, problem. And then I'm going to create an automation schedule where I'm setting this start time to the outputs text. So I'm taking the output from this deployment script and I'm using it. And afterwards, I'm also going to create a job schedule where I link the schedule and the run book together and make it as one. Now, I hope this will work because there is still a bug in Azure. And if we run into this bug, I will mention it. And why did my... Oh, I picked the wrong browser. Excuse me. This is the one we need. Yes. So... Let's do the schedule. Again, I'm using template specs. I love template specs. If you've never used it before and you're working with ARM templates, I can definitely recommend it. I'm picking the resource group we created before. Now you see I'm also having some different parameters. I've given them default values so I don't have to enter them. But you see with the template specs, I also get these nice forms for all the different parameters. Let's see if it's validating. Luckily, it did. And let's create it. So we'll take a short while, and then we should see the deployment script popping up. And any moment, it should appear here too. You do this too often. Look, there it is. Like we said, it's Azure. It's always very fast. So we have our script. We can in the, again see script content. And as soon as it's done, we should see the output. It's not there yet, so it will take a minute. So as you saw, I'm using a uh, certain 
variable, which is an array, or it's more like an object actually in PowerShell. So it's possible to generate more than one output with a deployment script, which is very nice. Just by putting them in this deployment script uh, variable, so in this deployment script output, every different attribute from this object will be outputted. And I can use again in different places. So if I need to calculate different values, I could put them all in one deployment script. Because you see one of the problems with deployment scripts is they're quite slow. And if you want to have a fast uh, deployment and you want to calculate different values and you do them all separately in different deployment scripts and it's all going serialized and not parallel, this can take some time. So we should be getting to the point where it's almost succeeded. It's running and we have an output. So now you see in the output, it says text and it gives me a value. Now let's see in our deployment, how it goes here. It's still working because well, deployment completed. So it was first a deployment script and then it created two more things. So if I'm going to my automation account now, we had a run book before. It now says an edit because I didn't close it correctly. We should now have a schedule. And if we look at the schedule, it says that the next moment is two o'clock. This is the thing I was referring to. I created the time in, in Dutch Amsterdam time, but then for some reason, ARM is still picking it up as UTC, then storing it in UTC and then an automation account because I have the time zone here is still converting it again. So depending on your daylight saving and stuff, it can differ a bit. I believe with Bicep, this is fixed a bit better. But um, in this way, I know by making it a Dutch time in the script, I know for sure that it will always work depending on the daylight saving. If you look at it, dive in this, into this a bit more and it's really necessary that it's always exactly the next hour when it's starting, it is possible I was just too lazy to get this exactly right. Because I just wanted to show you. And we also see that the run book here is connected to this schedule. So, this is all nice and good. But it is possible that the script will fail. So I've got a third deployment and my script content is this. Now, I don't know any PowerShell commandlet which um, this is, so this should fill my script. So let's start deploying this and then I can talk a bit more. Let's deploy it to the right resource group. And while it's deploying, so if I'm deploying a script, what I want to know is where it went wrong. If things went wrong, I want to be able to troubleshoot this properly. Now, when the deployment scripts first were introduced into Azure, as far as I remember when, while working with it, getting these errors was quite tedious. You had to go into the activity log and actually find it and yeah, it took me a while to find the errors. Nowadays, it's a lot easier. So let's see if we have the deployment script here already. It should be there any moment. The portal is always slow. So um, you will see that when it fails, it will halt my um, deployment or it will also fail the deployment because the deployment script deployment only is successful if the script was also successful. There is parameters you can set, as far as I remember, 
where you can also say the script is allowed to fail and still continue. But in most cases, I think if the script fails, you also want your deployment to fail. Now, let's see if it's done running. At least we have a fail here. It's still provisioning. Ah, but it says it failed. So we can look at the script content, blah, blah. Shouldn't work. And nice and easily in the overview, it already said it failed. Click here for more details. And I get the full PowerShell error already. So here it says the term blah, blah is not recognized as a name of a commandlet. Great. I've got my troubleshooting very easily accessible. And also in my deployment, it said it failed. For some reason, it always says conflict. Don't ask me why. But if I check the error details, again, here we also have the problems. So even if the container at one point is deleted, and I wasn't looking at my deployment, and then the next day I'm checking like, hey, it didn't work. I still have the error inside my deployment, even if the deployment container was already removed. You can also look at the raw error. So I think, yeah, I'm quite good for time. So the last part is, this is all nice and good, but how, when did I use them in practice? In the field, are there any reasons to actually use these deployment scripts? One of the reasons where I first encountered using them was actually in policy remediation scripts. So you can create Azure policies, which will check your resources if they are correctly and fit to the policy description. And I had to make a policy which would tag certain resources based on if they were behind a load balancer or not. And this became quite complex quite quickly by checking different uh, attributes. So the normal policy remedi remediation options to set a tag were not longer possible because I had to set different tags depending on uh, if they were behind the load balancer or not. So this is when I started using the deployment scripts the first time because also a policy remediation um, afterwards is actually just a deployment. It does a deployment. So you can use deployment scripts. So if a machine didn't have the right tag, it would spin up a container run a PowerShell script, which would check everything if it was correct and set the right tag with the right properties. And by using a system or a user assigned identity, I could make sure that this uh, deployment script will always have the right permissions to change these VM tags. I was using least privilege access, so I was also creating like custom roles. It became a very big script, but it's nice. The other one was kind of like what I showed before. We were setting up update management in an automation account, like the update management V1. And we had a lot of resources behind load balancers. And sometimes update management has to shut down a machine for updates. And if they're behind the load balancer, you don't want to shut them down before getting them out of the load balancer. Or in one way, tell the load balancer not to send messages to them anymore. So we created this automation account and we pushed scripts to it to make sure that before a machine was uh, shut down, it would first be removed from the load balancer and after it was done updating, it would be added back in the load balancer. And these scripts were in this uh, ARM template and then pushed by a deployment script, like I showed before. Now we did it a bit more fancy um, this customer didn't want to have the Git integration with Azure. So what we did is we had the scripts inside uh, a place where also the ARM templates were and from where they were deployed. And these scripts were first converted to Base64. So they could be passed as parameters to the ARM template. These were then passed as parameters to my deployment script. And inside the deployment script, we would convert them back from base64. So we had a proper script, which was stored on disk and then from disk 
sent to the automation account. So those are two situations where I used them in the past. And I hope I've shown you a little bit about how to use deployment scripts. And maybe you will also at one point remember, hey, they're a nice thing to use. Uh, in a situation where it's like, I don't know what else to use, this might be your way out to get it working. And that was about everything I wanted to tell you. So if there's any questions, feel free to ask them now. Is there a question there? <laughs> Yeah, in this situation, I inline them all with escape characters. Yeah, this is what we did with this advanced case also. Um, oh, sorry, the question is, uh, I have these scripts all inline in my ARM template with escape characters and so on. Is there an easy way to have them like nicely editable, and then uh, be uh, inside the ARM templates in this way where they would work. So I will share this whole repository with you also. Here, for example, you see this deployment run book I have, and I've got a little convert script to JSON thingy here. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting the path of this run book, and I'm replacing tabs with nothing, so all the tabs are removed, and I'm compressing it. For some reason, the convert to JSON compress doesn't remove some of the tabs, so I had to replace them. This is just a small example, but you can also integrate this in like a pipeline or whatever, so they can be passed as parameters to your ARM template. So you can have these scripts, and when you run it, you as uh, parameters, you just have like run this script and this is the input script and then it will convert to a JSON file which is exactly the format it needs inside your ARM template. For bicep, I think it should work the same, but maybe for bicep you could even use like script blocks or whatever. Not exactly sure if it works this way. Any more questions? Um, so the question was, what kind of container it's using? In the audience, it was already said it's not exactly a container. Um, I don't have an exact answer also to if it's what it's exactly using. Um, so yeah, sorry, I can't answer that question exactly. Uh, I know it is somewhere in the documentation. Uh, if you look for it, I don't have this ready from top of my head. Yeah, yeah. if you check the container instance, which is already removed, it should give you more information. Any more questions? Uh, is it also possible to run a deployment script at the event that it fails? So, like, uh, so the question is, is it possible to run a deployment script when something fails? Um, this depends on... Uh, the deployment language you're using. Um, as far as I know, in ARM, it is possible to run something if something else fails, so you should be able to. I think in this case, it would be better to not have this in your template and do something else, because you probably want to use it as some cleanup step then. And I think you should include this in your whole de deployment pipeline or whatever you're using. Um, but yeah, it, it should be possible. More questions? Then I thank you all for listening and
and uh, maybe we're, f we're first in line for the lunch. Thank you all.